I'm Catherine Pack, Senior Fellow here at CSIS, and I'm thrilled to welcome you today to another edition of Pacific Policy Pulse. I'm honored to be accompanied here today by James Movic, Director for the Pacific Fusion Center, based out of Vanuatu, but covering the entire Pacific region. Thanks for joining me here today, James. Thank you very much, Catherine. So you're here in town with a delegation of other senior officials from the Pacific to meet with various departments and agencies around the U.S. government. Can you tell me a little bit about your visit and what you hope to achieve? Right. The visit here is at the invitation of a U.N. organization, which has been working to assist the regional secretariats in the Pacific uh, to strengthen their capability to support our national members. The visit to Washington, D.C. is to meet with as many of the U.S. Uh, agencies as possible that have an interest in providing services and support to the Pacific Island countries uh, to be able to better coordinate or to understand the, the different uh, agencies and how they relate to each other and how they can best help us. This particular group, our role is to encourage the United States agencies to work through existing regional processes, which is very important for the Pacific Island region. So you are the inaugural director of the Pacific Fusion Center. From your perch at the PFC, what do you view as the biggest challenge looking ahead for the Pacific? I think uh, our biggest uh, challenge is, of course, in the, in the security sector, uh, climate change is definitely number one. Uh, and then we have that. Uh, the influence of climate change really affects all sectors and all activities. Uh, so climate change is number one. And then we have... Uh, uh, human security is number two because of the, of course, with climate change, we have a higher incidence of disasters in the region, and so we've got to be able to respond to that. Those are the two main uh, areas that, that the region has identified and where we focus a lot of our attention. Of course, we also deal with the other areas of security, such as traditional uh, transnational crime, environmental and uh, resources uh, crime, uh, cybersecurity, of course. And to some extent, we also pay attention to the geopolitical dynamic that um, uh, accompanies a lot of the other security issues in the, within the region. At the PFC, what is your main remit and what are you really looking to do for the region? Our main role is to provide policy support to the uh, national leaders and, and policymakers and their advisors. Uh, we have a, a limited set of beneficiaries who receive our uh, security assessments. But we also train uh, analysts in this. So the, the principal role is to strengthen the capability of the national uh, policymakers to understand the security threats that face the region, uh, how they use our assessments and respond is, of course, entirely up to them. But we are there to give them objective, integrated information that takes account of all of the various security threats. Uh, that are found across the region. And just one more question for you, uh, James. Uh, long flight between here and the Pacific. Uh, what are you reading these days? Our, our, our listeners are always curious, especially if you happen to have any recommendations on books that would help many of our interested listeners know more about the Pacific. Right. Well, you know, just I've been reading a whole slew of books recently, but trying to understand better a lot of the issues and, and get a better perspective on some of them. But one that struck me very recently that I picked up at the airport in Brisbane, Australia, was um, on entitled The Echidna Strategy, which is by Sam Rogovine, I believe, who's a former Australian intelligence uh, officer. But it was an interesting perspective on Australia's military strategy and uh, it had some references to AUKUS, the new development there, and which is why it interested me. It's a different perspective from the uh, official uh, strategy, of course, but it, it was interesting. And for those of us who are seeking to understand uh, certainly Australia's interests better and, and the implications of AUKUS, but it does provide a, another perspective. So uh, it's one that I found really quite interesting. Um, simply for that reason, trying to understand the issue from a different perspective. Well, thank you again for your time today, and thanks for joining us on Pacific Policy Pulse. Thank you very much, Catherine. Appreciate it.